Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be learning about the anatomy of the cubital fossa. To begin with, the cubital fossa is a triangular hollow situated on the front of the elbow as you can see right here. Now before we learn about the boundaries of the cubital fossa, let me show you this triangular structure right here. So this particular area would be its base, this will be the apex, this will be the lateral border or the boundary, this will be the medial boundary and there will also be a roof for this triangular structure and also a floor underneath it. So here for the cubital fossa while learning about its boundaries we will be using these terminologies that is a base, the apex, the lateral boundary, the medial boundary, the roof and the floor of the cubital fossa. Now let's learn about the boundaries of the cubital fossa. In this diagram you can see the right cubital fossa. So this is the lateral aspect of it and this is a medial aspect. Lateral means the area away from the midline of the body and medial means towards the midline of the body. So right here you can see the cubital fossa. The cubital fossa is bounded laterally by the brachioradialis muscle and to be more specific it is bounded laterally by the medial border of the brachioradialis muscle right here. Now medially the cubital fossa is bounded by the lateral border of the pronator teres muscle. Here you can see this is the pronator teres and this is its lateral border. Now looking at the base it is directed upwards and it is represented by an imaginary line as you can see right here joining the front of the two epicondyles of the humerus. Right here this is the lateral epicondyle, this is the medial epicondyle and this is the imaginary line joining the front of the two epicondyles. Then looking at the apex it is directed downwards and it is formed by the area where the brachioradialis crosses the pronator teres muscle as you can see right here. Next let's learn about the roof and floor of the cubital fossa. So the roof as we all know is formed by the skin. Underlying it comes the superficial fascia and this superficial fascia contains the median cubital vein that you see right here which connects or joins the cephalic and basilic veins. Here you can see in blue this is the cephalic vein and here is the basilic vein. Now beneath the superficial fascia comes the deep fascia and then we can see the bicipital aponeurosis as well. So here this green structure right here is the bicipital aponeurosis. Aponeurosis is nothing but a fibrous sheath that forms as a part of the tendon of the biceps brachii as we are talking about the bicipital aponeurosis. Now looking at the floor of the cubital fossa, this diagram shows a surface view and this shows a cross-sectional view. So in the surface view we can see that the floor is formed by the brachialis muscle and the supinator muscle that surrounds the upper part of the radius. Here also in the cross-sectional view you can see the supinator, it surrounds the upper part of the radius and here is the brachialis muscle. So let's concise what we learned till now. The cubital fossa is a triangular hollow situated on the front of the elbow. Looking at its boundaries, laterally it is bounded by the medial border of the brachioradialis muscle. Medially it is bounded by the lateral border of the pronator teres muscle. The base is directed upwards and it is represented by an imaginary line that joins the front of the two epicondyles of the humerus. The apex is directed downwards and it is formed by the area where the brachioradialis crosses the pronator teres muscle. The roof of the cubital fossa is formed by skin, superficial fascia that contains the medial cubital vein that joins the cephalic and basilic veins the deep fascia and also the bicipital aponeurosis and the floor of the cubital fossa is formed by the brachialis muscle and the supinator muscle that surrounds the upper part of the radius. Now let's learn about the contents of the cubital fossa. This is the right cubital fossa and this is its medial aspect and this is the lateral aspect as we had seen earlier. Now from the medial to the lateral side the contents of the cubital fossa can be easily remembered by using the word MBBR. So the M stands for the median nerve that you see right here. B stands for the brachial artery that is the structure you see in red right here. 
again the another b stands for the biceps brachii that is a muscle you see here and finally we have r that is a radial nerve that you see in yellow right here now we will learn about each of these structures and its significance in the cubital fossa in detail so out of the four structures m b b r let's look at the first that is a median nerve so in this diagram you can see this is the course of the median nerve and in significance to the cubital fossa let's zoom into the diagram so the median nerve gives branches mainly to the flexor carpi radialis muscle that you see right here it also gives branches to the palmaris longus muscle right here and also to the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle right here now after supplying these muscles it leaves the fossa that is the cubital fossa by passing between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle right here you can see this is the ulna head of the pronator teres muscle and here is the humeral head of the pronator teres muscle now let's look at the second structure after median nerve that is the brachial artery now in the cubital fossa there is a termination of the brachial artery here you can see this is a brachial art artery and it terminates at the cubital fossa and it gives off the radial and ulnar arteries so here you can see this is the radial artery and this is the ulnar artery now the radial artery is smaller and more superficial than the ulnar artery it gives off the radial recurrent branch as you can see right here this is the radial recurrent branch now talking about the ulnar artery that you see right here it goes deep to both heads of the pronator teres muscle it runs downwards and medially and it is separated from the median nerve by the deep head of the pronator teres muscle the ulnar artery gives off certain branches so let's look at it in detail first is the anterior ulnar recurrent branch that you see right here then we have the posterior ulnar recurrent branch right here and also the common interosseous branch so these are the three main branches now this particular common interosseous branch divides again into an anterior interosseous branch or the volar interosseous that you see right here and a posterior interosseous branch or the dorsal interosseous branch that you see right here and finally this posterior interosseous or the dorsal interosseous branch gives off the interosseous recurrent branch that you see right here now the third content of the cubital fossa after the median nerve the brachial artery is the biceps brachii muscle so right here in this diagram as we had seen earlier the content is the tendon of the biceps brachii with the bicipital aponeurosis that can be seen in the cubital fossa now the fourth structure that we need to learn about after the median nerve the brachial artery the biceps brachii is the radial nerve so in this diagram you can see here is the radial nerve it descends medial to the lateral epicondyle to enter the cubital fossa in the fossa it gives off a posterior interosseous nerve or the deep branch of the radial nerve as you can see right here this is the deep branch of the radial nerve it gives branches mainly to the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle and also to the supinator muscle as you can see right here it leaves the fossa by piercing the supinator muscle and the remaining superficial branch runs in the front of the forearm for some distance concising the important points under the contents of the cubital fossa from the medial to lateral side the contents are firstly the median nerve it gives branches to the flexor carpi radialis muscle the palmaris longus and the flexor digitorum superficialis and it leaves this fossa by passing between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle the next structure comes the brachial artery so in the cubital fossa there is a termination of the brachial artery and the beginning of the radial and ulnar arteries the radial artery is smaller and more superficial than the ulnar artery it gives off the radial recurrent branch the ulnar artery goes deep to both the heads of the pronator teres it runs downwards and medially and being separated from the median nerve by the deep head of the pronator teres muscle 
Now the ulnar artery gives off branches that is mainly the anterior ulnar recurrent, the posterior ulnar recurrent and the common interosseous arteries. Now this common interosseous branch again divides into an anterior interosseous and posterior interosseous arteries and the latter gives off the interosseous recurrent branch. Now the third structure is the tendon of the biceps brachii with the bicipital eponeurosis that can be found as a content in the cubital fossa. Finally, we have the radial nerve that descends medial to the lateral epicondyle to enter the cubital fossa. In the fossa, it gives off the posterior interosseous nerve or the deep branch of the radial nerve which gives branches mainly to the extensor carpi radialis brevis muscle and the supinator muscle. Then, this leaves the fossa by piercing the supinator muscle and the remaining superficial branch runs in the front of the forearm for some distance. Finally, let's look at some clinical anatomy associated with the cubital fossa. The median cubital vein is often the vein of choice for intravenous injections. Blood pressure is universally recorded by auscultating the brachial artery in front of the elbow as we all know. The anatomy of the cubital fossa is useful while dealing with the fractures around the elbow like that of the supracondylar fracture of the humerus. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of the anatomy of the cubital fossa and other notes of anatomy, physiology and other health science subjects, visit my website www.angelinaisaac.com, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.